balance the energy centers. And so, you know, healers and lots of spiritual people you talk about the chakras in kind of simplistic ways, like open the chakra. I'm going to open the chakra. Well, like it's mean. like like oh. a, like a pail or like a door. Like you open it or you close it. Oh, your heart chakra is closed. Well, if somebody had any one chakra fully closed, I think they'd be dead, actually, because I think all chakras are all somewhat activated simultaneously or in operation. And if they weren't, I'm not sure we would actually be able to survive in, in this body. So they're all open, and they're all blocked somewhat. And so the work is not opening. The work is clearing and balancing. Uh, it's actually with the lower two, meaning second and third, and we'll get into the chakras in a very deep presentation later on. The second and third need to be cleared uh, and balanced. The fourth and fifth, heart wisdom, need activation and balancing. And the sixth needs uh, coordination and activation and um, opening of the gateway. So. The sixth chakra, third eye, uh, coordinates the other five with the other five chakras below it, as well as needs full activation itself, as well as uh, makes integration to the seventh. The fourth and fifth chakras actually are are energized or intensified and activated further, and then balance and ultimately become crystallized. The second and third primarily need clearing and balancing, um, becoming unknotted, becoming um, harmonious and um, sufficiently cleared so that energy can do can go up further. And we'll see this too, the ascension of energy up the spine, the kundalini, you know, from the base chakra to the seventh. Ra talks about that as well. So um, Ra adds, in many cases, therefore, those normally quite blocked, weakened, and distorted can, through love and strength of will, become healers momentarily. Uh, you can think of uh, the Matrix movie where Trinity gives Neo a big kiss after he dies and brings him back to life. Uh, this is lovely. Through love and strength of will. Right? She loved him deeply. He was the one and the one for her. And by strength of will and, and faith, she knew he was the one. She knew he couldn't die. You can't die. And, you know, belief uh, moves mountains, right? So she had utter certainty that he can't die. He is the one and loved him deeply and brought him back. Uh, that's no different, in essence, than what Jesus uh, did when he's raising the dead, if, if that really happened. But that's what a healer will do, or, or a great master, um, in terms of either helping he. So, you see, it's like almost three o'clock, and I woke up at two, 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 shivering. Like with a fever. And if I took my blanket off, I was just sort of... So I came in here. I began to run the water. So I thought I'd bring you along. Healing another, or itself becoming a perfect healer of, of oneself um, by great strength of will. This is very interesting. However, to be a healer by nature, one has to train oneself. And so then Don asks about the training. Uh, I'm going to go through this response and the next one, and then we'll open to questions. I think maybe people are getting ready for asking questions. So Don asks, should the person to receive training be living the law of one? Ross says, this is both correct and incorrect. To someone such as yourself, 
with a desire to learn about healing, it is correct. Meaning, you ought to be living a law of one in your training. However, there are some souls who can heal, yet their lives do not reflect the law of one. These souls have, nevertheless, found a pathway to intelligence infinity, uh, divine healing power, uh, i.e. seven chakra. Even though they still have blockages in their lower chakras. Uh, again, I have uh, a little bit uh, modified the language in these paragraphs to make it easier. So you will find phrases that Ra doesn't use, like divine. They never use the word divine. And they don't, in fact, I'm not sure if they use the term lower chakras either. Um, but, you know, bear with me. So, you know, <laughs> compared to Ra, even a nice word like divine, I think, is kind of loose, uh, not a narrow band transmission as it looks to me now, but uh, I apologize for that. <coughs> so, Ra is basically saying, if you want to learn about healing, then of course you need to be living the law of one. Living the law of one means seeking to be of benefit to self and other, and seeking to be in balance and harmony, and seeking, you know, our own best way forward um, for the benefit of all. Uh, that's, no, that's pretty simple. simple. So, so if you, you want, want to learn healing and get that training, then sure, you, you ought to have a spiritual way of living. But then there are people who do healing, but their lives don't reflect that, which means, Ra used the term, their lives don't equal their work. Uh, or their, their, yeah, their, their work is greater than their life. Their life does not equal their work. And you can think of more than a few um, healers and energy senders and spoon benders uh, who, who are showmen and um, are in league with negativity or they're, they're just egotistical and they want a big following and their lives don't reflect the law of one. They are manipulating others. They are self-aggrandizing. Yet they can either heal or have access to uh, intelligent energy, six chakra, because they found a pathway to intelligent infinity, seven. The pathway is the link between six and seven chakra. They made the pathway to intelligent infinity, seven, by accessing it through six, uh, by opening to intelligent energy, which comes through six chakra from seven. Still, they have blockages in lower chakras. And so, me too, you know. I can be a wonderful teacher, but I still have blockages. And so that working on the blockages is a separate work than the presenting of Ra's truth, in my case, you know. Or our, you know, it's like people say, well, it's, it's, it's not so hard to help others, it's hard to really help yourself. It's not so hard to give good advice um, or to appreciate the glory of this teaching to me. But, you know, I myself have my own work to do, and still areas of, of mind that are not healed, balanced, accepted, integrated, you know, normally. So, um, Don asks, can you restate that in another way? Meaning, can you restate this uh, distinction between types of healers living or not living the law of one? What is that all about? Ross, there are two categories of healers. One, those such as yourself who have an innate desire to share knowledge of the law of one uh, can heal but do not. And then those who with the same knowledge uh, show no significant desire towards unity or law of one in either mind, body, or spirit.